As the fourth Okage, Minato had to contend with many threats to the village that he is tasked to protect, and few threats can match the might of a tailed beast. Apart from their sheer size and their vast pools of chakra that enable them to just keep going and going, tailed beasts can also fire out incredibly powerful blasts of chakra that are capable of instantly wiping out multitudes of lives. Unwilling to let himself be content with his own rather impressive abilities, Minato took inspiration from the tailed beast ball to create a smaller human sized version of the same technique, the Rasengan. Possibly the most recognizable ninjutsu technique throughout the series, the Rasengan is arguably perfect, though you may need some convincing. Having taken three years for Minato to develop and perfect, the Rasengan is an incredibly powerful ninjutsu, being able to even overpower the likes of other dangerous techniques like the Chidori. It is also surprisingly easy to use once the methodology is understood. It requires no hand seals, and once a Rasengan ball is formed, there is no additional consumption of chakra needed to maintain it. At its most basic form, the Rasengan is plenty powerful as it twists and pushes its victims, but what makes it particularly potent is that it can be adapted. The more you become familiar with the ninjutsu, the more you can adapt it to your own preferences, from making it bigger to making it invisible, and maybe most importantly to being able to infuse other chakra flavors into it gaining new forms and new abilities. We've seen, for example, a wind-infused Rasengan that cuts you down to the molecular level, and that's just one example. Weaknesses-wise, on the most basic level, the ninjutsu is a close combat type jutsu, and only with greater control and proficiency can one eventually be able to throw it. Additionally, while maintaining a Rasengan doesn't necessarily consume more of your chakra, creating a ball to begin with probably takes a decent chunk of chakra, something not too many can afford. I say probably because there has never really been a concrete chakra expenditure comparison between the Rasengan and any other jutsu, however we know that Kakashi for example, is perfectly capable of using the Rasengan, and considering that we know that the Rasengan is a more powerful jutsu compared to the Chidori, the fact that Kakashi keeps using the Chidori over the course of the series must mean that the expenditure is not worth the marginal increase in power to Kakashi. And this theory kind of makes sense in hindsight if we consider the classic Rasengan users. Minato, the creator, was considered to be a prodigious talent, and was the Hokage at a relatively young age. Jiraiya was one of the three seinen, considered generational talents, and we know that his chakra pool is gigantic since he is able to summon the giant Gamabunta, something that tired out even Naruto. And finally, Naruto's chakra pool is the cream of the crop throughout the series, and is the measuring stick that every other ninja seems to be comparing themselves to. In fact, with some debate, it can be argued that among all Rasengan users, Kakashi has among the lowest overall chakra pools, if not the smallest. While there is a lot of emphasis as to the steps to learning this powerful technique, Kakashi himself has stated that it isn't particularly hard to create the Rasengan, and we've seen Boruto and Konohamaru be able to learn the move just fine at a relatively early age, with neither being considered head and shoulders above their peers at that age. Speaking of users, running through the list, we have its creator Minato, who eventually parted the knowledge of the technique to his sensei Jiraiya, who would add it to his regular repertoire. As Minato would become a sensei himself, he would also have Kakashi under his care. Now, I will say that it is never fully explained how Kakashi was able to learn the Rasengan, whether it be through Minato's guidance or through simply copying it using the Sharingan. However, considering that Kakashi was able to perfectly explain the theoretical side of the Rasengan, I would guess that Minato probably imparted the knowledge or at the very least gave guidance on how Kakashi could recreate it. While earlier I did say that Minato perfected the Rasengan, in truth the Rasengan wouldn't really meet his definition of perfect until Naruto was actually taught the move and was allowed to experiment and eventually bring out the full potential of the technique. Considering himself a mentor figure to Konohamaru, he would in turn impart the secrets behind the technique to his young protege. The cycle would then continue as Konohamaru would eventually do the same and teach Baruto the technique. However, with the passage of time and the advancement of the technologies, the Rasengan has on some level been deciphered, as a scroll ammo for the Shinobi Gauntlet allows just about anybody to use the Rasengan. With that said, technology is not widely available just yet, and the usage or ammo of the Jutsu seems to be rather limited. And finally, the user himself doesn't necessarily understand the theoretical side of what is happening for a Rasengan to be formed. 
Throughout the series, the Rasengan undergoes many evolutions, and while I won't dive deep into each, let's note a few of my favorites. Although size isn't necessarily everything, seeing Naruto create giant Rasengans never seems to disappoint. The base form of the Rasengan is roughly the size of its user's palm, and Naruto has since shown that you can create bigger and bigger and bigger and just bigger Rasengans. The density of chakra that each ball contains corresponds to their sizes, with the largest obviously hurting the most. By finally infusing the Rasengan with the kind of nature chakra, in this case wind, Naruto would create the original intent of Minato. The Rasen Shuriken may no longer be the most powerful Rasengan in his inventory, but I'd say it's the one that had the biggest spotlight throughout the series. Finally, the other Rasengan I wanted to talk about was the Tail Beast Rasengan, which was poised to be probably the ultimate technique for Naruto, but Kurama eventually decided to be a bro, and I guess they just decided to give up on the Tail Beast Rasengan. Probably the largest Rasengan seen was the Parent and Child Rasengan, which consisted of both Naruto and the revived Minato in their Tail Beast mode to combine forces and create just a really big Rasengan. Finally, the most low-key Rasengan is Boruto's Vanishing Rasengan that incorporates a splash of lightning chakra and allows it to disappear from sight before landing. This gives it a surprise factor which at times can be just enough to take down an opponent. On some level, it can be said that the Vanishing Rasengan would have been what Kakashi would have arrived to had he been able to add lightning chakra to his Rasengan before giving up and creating the Chidori instead. To wrap up this video, I wanted to ask you a question. What color is the Rasengan? For most people, the answer to that question is some kind of blue, mostly to the lighter end. However, through various medias, the color of the Rasengan has been rather inconsistent. In the original anime, we typically see it as being blue. However, in the manga, things seem to lean to a different part of the rainbow. Typically, in the manga, the Rasengan is actually shown to be yellow, as we can see most clearly in this cover of Volume 52. And you might be thinking, well, that must have been a mistake. But in the official Naruto Colored Edition, the Rasengan is again depicted as yellow. Even in some official art books, the Rasengan is again shown as being yellow. Ah, but then you would say that on the cover of Volume 67, the Rasengan is clearly blue. And furthermore, on this other art book, well, the Rasengan is blue. So, let me first try and convince you that Naruto's chakra, which composes the Rasengan and as a result reflects the color, in all of these cases is indeed yellow. Ignoring the obvious relationship to the general colors of Naruto, in chapter 91, Jiraiya tries to get Naruto thinking about the chakra inside of him, and Naruto himself describes his chakra as being yellow, with the Nine Tails' portion being red. While Naruto, especially at this specific time period isn't exactly the brightest, we know that he got the red part right later on, so he probably is right about the yellow one too. As to why it shows up as blue in other spots, well, for the cover of volume 67, I would note that this isn't representing just Naruto's Rasengan as we can clearly see Minato there, so perhaps he influenced the color a bit. Meanwhile, in the anime, the Rasengan is shown as blue, probably to best visually contrast the move on the small screen from the rest of the orange and yellow of Naruto. Since the manga is typically in black and white, we have never had that kind of problem, but if there was a scene that had a close-up of the Rasengan juxtaposed to Naruto himself, it may be hard to differentiate where one ends and the other begins, so the animators probably just decide to settle on blue. Still, you may be wondering why the cover for that other art book also has a Rasengan showing up as blue. Well, I would say that there was like this weird time period between the end of Naruto and the first chunk of Boruto that Kishimoto, the author, was kind of hands off. We know that Naruto ended in 2014, and when did this art book come out? Well, 2015. So I guess that Kishimoto probably just didn't pay too close of attention to this kind of small detail, and it just came out as it did. But at the end of all this, you may be thinking, what was the point of this segment? And to that, my dear dummies, that's how you fill time. Thanks for watching.